Okay, here's a game against a uh, 6Q. We'll see how we do. Let's say hello. And then uh, let's uh, zoom in on the board. He said, Onegaishimasu. So I get to go first. Let's start with the uh, opening the bishop's diagonal. And uh, I'm going to close it off for now rather than allow the immediate exchange. I'm going to bring the silver around. <coughs> To defend against uh, rook pawn pushes. Hmm. Pagaimi. Pagaimi is thinking, what is this flag? Portugal. Cool. Okay, so he put his bishop here. That will slow down my rip palm, but I'm not going to move that immediately. I'm going to get the silver up there. I might go for a fast Yagura castle. Uh, he is going for a um, Put the gold here. He's uh, going for a uh, what a fourth file rook. Anyway, a, a ranging rook strategy of some kind. So I'm going to set up a different castle. I, I've been um, looking up different castles, and I also watch the games of Schwartz Shogi, something like that on uh, Twitch. And uh, he plays the. Uh, Gangi Castle, he calls it. Um, it's on. It's called the Snow Roof. It's called the Snow Roof Castle on Wikipedia. And the silver's come up. Go defend the edge a little bit with that push. Okay, he brought his silver up, put my silver here. So this is pretty much the castle formation. It's it's a little bit um, more solid than um, than the Yugura, particularly against attacks from the side. At least that's what I've been led to understand. <laughs> we'll see. I'm probably not doing it in, in the most accurate move order, but uh, there's kind of two configurations of the snow roof. The ones in one case, the silver goes to this square. I, you know, I haven't figured out how to get the uh, <laughs> how to get the uh, uh, coordinates on the board here. And um, and the other one, it goes to the square straight ahead. I think I'll try this modern snow roof. And uh, we'll see what he does against this. Is he going to just keep pushing his pawns? So he can take... I should take first then, because if he takes, it'll be a problem for me. But um, if I take and he takes back, I can drop a pawn at least. I don't have to drop the pawn. The rook is hitting my silver, and the silver is defended, so it doesn't really want to take my silver. His rook can slide back and forth. But there's not too many squares it could go to. It could go back over here, I guess. These things are all defended. Let's start pushing my rook pawn. And I don't know what his castle is. Maybe, ah, he. I should have. I should have put a pawn there. <laughs> That's the reason. That's the reason why you put a pawn there. I could have dropped a pawn to chase his uh, rook away, instead of allowing this. So if I put a pawn there now, and he takes take back and then he could drop a pawn again that would just kind of repeat so the pawn can't really come forward as long as I've got two um, 
<clears throat> two pieces covering that square. I just have to be careful it doesn't get a uh, like a silver up there. Is there a way for me to bring another piece over to attack that pawn? Let's see. He may be thinking of prying open this uh, diagonal for the bishop. Who would a bishop trade favor here? He takes, I take back. Say if I push this pawn forward. He takes my bishop. I take back and then he takes the pawn. If he drops the bishop, can he attack anything? King is here, its diagonals are protected. Rook is here, its diagonals are protected. Maybe able to attack some pawns. Let's try it. I mean, one advantage of getting rid of the bishop is then I could push the uh, this rook pawn forward some more. And I will. So we both have a bishop we can drop and have to be careful of that. I probably should have taken a moment there and looked to see if there was a place I could drop the bishop that was especially strong. The uh, diagonals to the rook and the king don't appear too promising at the moment. He can bring his knight forward. I did not allow for that. Also, after the exchange, he's also he's got bishop drops. He can drop a bishop here or here to attack my rook. So that's probably what he's trying to figure out. Where where's his best uh, rook drop? Or just bring the knight forward to attack these pawns, but they're both defended. So yeah, drops a pawn there to keep me from coming in. Maybe supporting the piece there. Okay, drop a silver now. I could I could drop a silver hitting his uh, knight. I could drop it on this square. I mean, drop the bishop. That square it gets taken. I could drop it on this square. Hits the knight and hits this pawn, which is protected. Dropping it back here. Yeah, maybe I can find a good diagonal for it over here too. Yeah, I was thinking of bringing a silver forward to defend the knight. I wonder if I could get my knight into the game. Push this pawn, play the knight here. Is there a problem if he just defends the knight? Ah, the problem is that it leaves this pawn undefended, so I can take that and promote. So maybe uh, my opponent is actually in a bit of difficulty. Ah, so he defends by dropping the bishop. So I can take, he'll take with the rook. If I let him take, it'll pull my knight away from this defensive position. So let's let's do this. Uh, 
now I can drop the bishop again, hitting his rook. <laughs> and uh, the rook will drop back here to defend the knight. Interesting. It did. Okay, so now I wanted to try and bring my knight into the game. So I'm pushing this third file pawn forward. Knight to here. Where is it going from there? Well, a knight here would stop his knight from coming forward, so it has some advantage that way. Here's an idea. I could push this pawn forward again, he takes, and then I could drop a pawn here, attacking his knight. Ah, so now he takes advantage of the hit on my rook, and it is going here. I've got this square covered, this square covered, and this square covered, so we can't, um, <clears throat> can't easily penetrate with that uh, silver, with that bishop, rather. Got these squares covered. Hmm, so now my trick of pushing and dropping doesn't, doesn't actually work. I was relying on the knight there to defend the pawn, so I was going to push my pawn forward, he takes, and then I drop a pawn there, attacking the knight, defended by the rook. Well, no, it still works. It still works, because it doesn't need to be defended. It's just attacking the knight. The uh, only thing I need to do is first I have to take away the forward flight squares of the, uh, of the knight. So I bring my knight out here, so his knight can't go to either of those squares. The rook is already covering here. And then I push the pawn forward, and if he takes it, if he doesn't take it, I can push again and attack his knight. If he doesn't, if he does take it, then I can drop a pawn behind his pawn. That's my plan. Well, <laughs> at least I feel like I'm playing okay this game. I played two horrible games where I lost to uh, players who were rated. Uh, one was 9Q and one was 11Q. I was beginning to think, gosh, <laughs> I think the ratings are um, a bit random. That's my impression, because sometimes these players seem much stronger than me, and they have the same rating, and sometimes they seem much weaker than me. But anyway, I just wanted to get a good game here so we can check it out, maybe learn something from it. So he's he's bringing his gold forward. Uh, he may have some plan here to assault my position. His bishop can take my knight, but I don't think that's a good trade. Unless uh, it does pull some of my pieces out of position, I'd have to decide whether I want to retake with the silver or the rook, because I was relying on the silver and the gold to defend this square on the fourth file. Ah, so we just went there. Yeah, I was going to take that. And I recognize now, of course, he can take with the rook. Don't have to take it. I could keep coming forward. So I take, he takes back, and I have a knight I can drop. I could drop it here with a fork. Let's do this. Oh, it's not a fork because his rook will be taking. <laughs> so I have a knight I can drop, but uh, but it's not a fork. If I move the silver up to chase his uh, rook away. Let's see what he does here. 
I never got my silver to this uh, fourth file position it would go to in a normal in the snow roof castle but I almost <laughs> I almost completed my castle <laughs> but uh, well yeah he disrupted it by pushing this this pawn forward I guess that was the issue so oh, the knight went there yeah he noticed the fork so I can drop the knight here hitting his gold gold will come forward and then later he could push this pawn forward to attack my knight could drop the knight somewhere else drop the knight where the rook is okay how about if I chase his bishop the square is covered this square is covered this square is covered this square is covered rook here he can defend the bishop with a pawn Well, it also attacks uh, this pawn here, I guess. If I get my rook here, then um, then the knight drop to attack the gold makes some sense. I'm starting to get closer to his king. And I should start to think about what I can do with my bishop. Bishop on this square would be looking at the king. Yeah, he's thinking about protecting the, the bishop with his pawn. That's, that's what I was thinking he might respond with. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Silver here is doing a good job. I have another piece guarding the square for his pawn to come forward. Okay, I'm going to play that move a little quickly. We're running low on time, and then we're going to get into the Byoyomi period, which is always a little bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> so now the night drop the gold can't come forward I'll just take it could come forward diagonally mm, I might have to bring bring my rick back He could try to creep in with his bishop, couldn't he? Now that my rook is no longer here, he could go here. <laughs> yeah, my bishop is on this diagonal, so I can take take his lance and promote. I think I should. Maybe he expected that. Uh, what did he play? I didn't see his move. Ah, he dropped a knight here, attacking my silver. Knight can come forward and promote. Let's step back. Oh, he just brought it straight forward. I thought he might try and harass my, my bishop by coming to this diagonal, but he didn't. He didn't. He's covering these squares, though. Let's see, so I can come here. I'll just go back. If I drop my knight here... Well, here, let's drop the lance here. Attack his um, bishop and see where it wants to go. Can't go forward now with the... Uh, Knight blocking the forward diagonal, so it goes back. Ah, and he offers the trade. Let's take it. Uh, 
Then what? Can not play either of those squares. I could go here. Attacking my rook. Thought I would just drop down here, but let's think about it. I could try and coordinate on this square. That's pretty well protected. Just drop back. <clears throat> Now pushing the pawn forward. That would stop me from dropping a knight there. And I can't drop a pawn there because I already have a pawn on that. Um, uh, but he started to worry about his uh, knight. That's true. I could could just take his knight if he doesn't do anything special to defend it. But he didn't. He just uh, retreated here. Don't understand. Uh -huh, he's pushing a pawn. Let's drop the knight, attack his uh, gold here. Okay, he went back. What if I drop a pawn there? Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it, right? Drop a pawn there. It's attacking the gold. Can push it and promote it. If he takes it, I'll take with the knight. And promote to attack his pieces there. He's activated his bishop and snapped off this pawn. So I can take the gold, he can take back. And um, I should be thinking about where's my bishop anyway. I went that way. Yeah, my bishop is looking at that pawn. Unfortunately, the uh, the gold defends it. I can drop another pawn here. <laughs> Very distracting to have that uh, that uh, timer counting down. He can drop a pawn too, yes. Okay, ah. So I take, uh, and the bishop, uh, let's take with the piece that attacks the bishop. So if the bishop retreats, then I can take uh, the gold there. So he takes there. Okay, I will take the bishop. So I've got bishop in hand, gold, silver, and knight. I've got a bishop here. He's brought his rook over to defend. Yeah, I think dropping a bishop here would be good. So somewhere around here. I'm going to try and somehow break through. <clears throat> and 
Okay, blocks with the knight. So I can drop a knight or a pawn. Let's do the pawn drop again. When the gold moves, I can take his knight. Or not. <laughs> he can take there. Right, because he's got the rick behind it. Uh, I did that wrong. So drop another pawn. I'm running low of pawns. And I can drop a knight. There ought to be some way to break through just with all the pieces I have in hand here. Just I'm not so skilled at doing this. But that's a common trick, actually, to lure lure a piece forward by sacrificing a pawn. Okay, I won. I'm not sure if I won by time or if he resigned, but uh, let's say thank you. And uh, thank you for the game. Have a nice day. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the uh, full screen view so you can see the uh, description there. So that was the, uh, the best game that I've played so far. It's the first time I've scored a win on someone as high rated as 6Q. It's kind of funny that it came after, uh, after two terrible losses to players who were, you know, like I said, 9Q and 11Q. Anyway, I'm going to uh, check this game out uh, with, uh, with Elmo and, um, and Shogi Dokoro. And if I learn anything, I will add that to this video. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Well, that was a really long game, and you can see it was a lot of uh, back and forth. I'm not going to go over this. Uh, maybe maybe uh, in another video I will uh, have time to uh, to look at all the ups and downs. i just uh, briefly comment that it, uh, the bars above the line are when I'm winning, and the bars below the line are when my opponent has the advantage. And it uh, looks like I missed one winning chance here. It looks like uh, my opponent had the advantage in the early part of the game coming out of the opening and then made some mistakes to let me back in and then went back and forth here as I missed that opportunity. And then he had an opportunity here, it looks like, to get an advantage. And then towards the end, I, I was just winning. In fact, at one point, there was even a, a forced mate, a mate in 17. Of course, can't really find that without a computer. But clearly, at the end, I had a winning position. And uh, I just wanted to clear up how the game ended. I had to do a little bit of research because I didn't see the messages go by. But it turns out that he had made an illegal move at the last on the last move and that's that's why I won. He tried to drop his pawn to the uh, 4d square here attacking my bishop. You know it's a counterattack. I've attacked his uh, knight. He can attack something bigger but unfortunately he has a, uh, a pawn here. Now yeah, let's clear that. He has a pawn on this square so he can't drop a pawn on this square. That uh, breaks the rule against having uh, two pawns in the same column. So that's how the game ended. He uh, made an illegal move. Anyway, uh, that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. And certainly uh, the best game I've ever <laughs> I've played so far. Hopefully I can uh, play some good ones in the future. Anyway, see you all next time. Bye.